So, Birth of a Nation is the somewhat controversial film by Nate Parker, directed by him, written by him, produced by him, starring him, did the music, painted the sets, everything. Uh, it's written by him and uh, Jean Magani Celestin, and it's based upon the true story of Nat Turner, who led a slave rebellion in 1831. And the story is about Nat Turner, played by Nate Parker, is a slave, but he's also a Baptist preacher who lives on a Virginia plantation owned by Samuel Turner, played by the handsome Army Hammer. And with rumors of insurrection in the air, um, a cleric convinces Samuel that Nate should sermonize the other slaves, sort of calm them down, be like, hey, just don't worry about being a slave, it's in the Bible. And uh, thereby sort of quelling any rumors of uprisings and... As Nate witnesses the horrific treatment of his fellow slaves in less good plantations, I guess. <laughs> Heavy use of uh, quotation marks here. Uh, he realizes he can no longer just stand by and preach. And he leads a rebellion which had huge historical ramifications. So I didn't like it at all. I thought it, it's a very problematic film which contains some genuinely good bits, but these are somewhat negated by these creative decisions that leave a really bad taste in your mouth. And it's taken this very emotive subject matter and facts that are historically documented and changing it and molding it to form a very egocentric narrative. And at times I was wondering, is this the birth of a nation or is it the Nat Turner story or is it the Nate Parker story? And Nate Parker's ego is the drive behind the making of this film and also the lasting impression <laughs> of the film. Yeah. I think the best thing about it is the title, which is the name of this 1915 D.W. Griffiths movie where the KKK are heroes. And there's something kind of bold and audacious about reclaiming that title for a film about the slave uprising. And it's a very passionate film. And uh, it's got a certain energy because you know the uprising at some point is going to happen. There's a slight sort of ticking clock nature of the film. And I guess it's inevitably going to be compared with 12 Years a Slave. And that has a very matter-of-fact approach to its material, which is what kind of gives it its power. But I think the approach of the film is like, if 12 Years a Slave was someone calmly explaining slavery to you, Birth of a Nation is someone sort of yelling at you. Yeah. Uh, but there's something a little tautological about it. It's sort of, it just says slavery is wrong again and again and doesn't really investigate it in any way that is interesting or wants to deal with the complexity of the issues. But something it does have, um, not over 12 years a slave, but some a different angle it has is that it really deals with the idea of Christianity's part in slavery. And yeah, it was a kind of a battleground in the moral debate over slavery. Yeah, and by far the most interesting character in the film is... Army Hammer's slave owner, which is a bit like Benedict Cumberbatch's nice, quote unquote, slave owner becoming Michael Fassbender. That's like his arc. And the idea that he's got these sort of interesting shades of grey and his conscience is completely tied to his wallet and he's nice when he needs to be, but when times are tough, he's willing to just be tired. Stop see, seeing these people as people. And it has these very bizarre and surreal dream sequences, which are also very effective which are apparently based on the real Nat Turner, had these visions. There's something very biblical about this, both the original historical story and the film. And there's a real like Old Testament vibe, the blood wall out. He's sort of Moses, that kind of, yeah. the rapture is going to happen, which gives it a certain energy. But at the same time, like basically Nat Turner went nuts and butchered all these people. And it has no qualms of sort of, this guy's a Christian, he's like Christ-like, but he also, he's like Christ, but he kills a bunch of people. And it doesn't really address that. <laughs> There's a bit of a conflict in that. That yeah. conflict, it, but I don't think, he doesn't address it because he doesn't see that there is one. And that's like sort of indicative of the slightly reductive and simplistic take he has on the material. And it's very backwards film, especially in its treatment of female characters. There are two rape scenes in it, both of which are off camera. And both of them are purely from the male perspective. And they only exist to motivate the male characters right. in a way which is really icky. Yeah. Like, ugh. And, uh, yeah, that was basically the reaction of the audience most of this. <laughs> <sort> of, <sighs> and basically, it's got this weird perspective where everything is seen through Nat Turner's gaze. But it's Nate Parker's gaze. And it's almost as if every atrocity in the film is just some sort of points which will eventually accumulate to where it will equal rebellion. 
so he sees some horrific stuff and it, the, it's a close-up of, of uh, Nate Parker just reacting to that like the real burden is him witnessing it and his, rather you, than there's like you p- see his like rebellionometer go up a little bit well like, it is a bit like that it's like Scott Pilgrim and it kind of like well for example there's a scene there's a flogging scene and the shot is completely his close up and it's not about the pain inflicted it's about him thinking maybe uh, maybe I should rebel rebellion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the lighting is like halo like he's like stretched out like Christ and it's all about this one guy and the real guy butchered women and children and the actual story reads like a man who was pushed to the edge and like completely lost his mind which makes perfect sense really in terms of what happened to him but that is too complex and i don't know uh, shocking a story to tell and so the audacity of the title was a completely misleading thing because it's so conventional and reductive in its storytelling so i read and like and i also think who wants to see a pretty good or okayish slavery film? Nobody. It's got to be. It's got to be good. a masterpiece, or it's not worth the sort of toughness. Yeah, yeah. I don't. It's not a film not worthy of its controversy in a way because it's just quite amateurish. So five thousand stars out of ten billion stars. <laughs> Sam and Danny both watched a film and they decided to record a few opinions on the things they saw You're gonna hear them in a moment or so There could be angry disagreements but their views are normally quite close Let's join review, share between two podcast brothers Do they let one another speak or do they interrupt each other?